Hi, my name is Paul Ramirez. I want to welcome you to the introductory free 40 lesson course that's being offered by Ron Paul Curriculum for my math course for beginners arithmetic. And my course is based entirely on raised arithmetic and that's the number one benefit of the trial course is, this, is that it is also based on Ray's arithmetic primary book. Now Dr. Ray um, pioneered a lot of things in the teaching of arithmetic and mathematics in general in the 19th century which was when he lived. Uh, he died about the middle of the century and what he ended up doing was he pretty much brought the study and teaching and learning of mathematics into the mainstream of education because before he came along it really was not. In fact um, this article from the West Virginia Review in 1932 recognized that uh, what Joseph Ray did for figures which was basically what they were referring to as you know arithmetic and learning mathematics he did for figures what McGuffey did for literature and what Harvey did for grammar and those three men were basically the they formed kind of a textbook dynasty in education in the 19th century in America as far as textbooks and teaching methods were concerned for teaching these general areas and Dr. Ray did that for math uh, how did he do that or what did he do in order to accomplish revolutionizing math teaching? Well, he took arithmetic and mathematics and um, took it from what it was before, which was it was a very dry subject, a very, very esoteric, very abstract. It was hard for people to understand because it was taught in a way that just required you to just memorize a lot of symbols and rules and principles and there wasn't a lot of real-world application of it, so it was thought to be not very useful. In fact, it was not included in education programs. It wasn't taught to a lot of people overall, like reading and writing were. But Dr. Ray uh, was able to bring that, you know, along to where it became commonplace for kids to be taught arithmetic, and mathematics became a mainstay in education after he came along and did what he did. But basically, he he made arithmetic practical and he made it interesting which is what it was not before then um, how did he do that well he took what he had learned both as a student and as a teacher himself he was a principal he taught college he was a professor he was a high school teacher he was a a grade school teacher he taught small children older children adults and he he loved mathematics all his life and he had studied the work of prior mathematicians from other cultures in other countries and he brought together the best of what he learned from their methods and he took basically from what he thought was just a clear way of explaining math that the French mathematicians had before his time and he, he saw these practical ways that math was applied by English and German approaches and he brought it all together because he thought that uh, a student should be able to have both a practical and a theoretical understanding of math. And that's why his arithmetics from the very beginning, when they were first published in 1834, were known as eclectic arithmetic because his was the first work that combined all these different schools of thought and combined them to make a very effective way for even the youngest of kids to be taught arithmetic and they would really learn it and understand it and like it and his books were published in an eclectic education series as they began to be published more broadly and cover more levels of math they became part of this education series so eclectic course means that it was because they were they were derived from a broad range of sources because that's how he he got his uh, ideas from his own experience and from what he learned and he, he put together a very extensive mathematical series during his career as a math teacher and it all started with a primary arithmetic book which was first published in the 1830s and it became very popular and widely used very quickly and pretty soon all of his math books were used all over the country at all levels of, of, of grades and the book we're going to be using for our trial course is this one here the primary math book and the first eight lessons of the book are going to be the basis of our 40 uh, free lessons because what we do here is we adopt Dr. Ray's method of taking our time with each lesson. These are not daily lessons. Each of these lessons was actually intended to be spent uh, to have you know the child spend uh, a week or more on each lesson because it that was the secret of 
mastering the arithmetic was spending time on it and practicing it and just really getting to know it because this forms a very solid foundation for the child by spending this time on practice and repetition and using real world things to count with and and um, moving to writing symbols only later on. So initially you'll see that these 40 lessons are mostly oral. There's very little writing to them. In fact, the only written part of it is just whenever there's practice required for the child to write the figures down. That's the only written part of this entire uh, first part of the course, the 40 lessons. There is a test included in the 40 lessons along the way, which part of it has the child writing the symbols down for the um, figures, excuse me, for the numbers that they're learning. But other than that, it is an oral course and an oral uh, uh, test at that point. Later on, after we do this initial phase of it, we move into the written part of arithmetic where they will learn symbols and learn um, just the written aspects of math, the more abstract parts of it. Now Dr. Ray's method is the one that I use here which is to begin with objects that you find in real life where the child can pick up and see and feel and touch and work with with their hands and see with their own eyes how things add up and how numbers are where they come from, how, they, how we use them and once they're very good at that we move towards mental arithmetic which is where they will be counting things and working with numbers mentally and we begin to work figures into that and later we move to the more extra abstract part of it where they will work with symbols exclusively and they won't be needing the manipulative objects and things in front of them to be doing their math they, but they learn how to do the arithmetic mentally after they've done this stage where they can manipulate things in real life. So that's the important progression that we follow as we go through the course. And as you flip through the um, book itself, because you'll be able to download this raised book and print it out, and you'll see even in these first eight lessons that we're going to go through how the problems are very simple and they're all worded to be read orally, spoken to the to the child as you go through them. And there are no symbols at all in this first part of it. So that's what helps the understanding of the arithmetic concepts is just to just immediately go to asking how many are five and one, how many are four and two, how many are three and three, you see. Now after the trial course is over with, that's the preparation for the rest of the Math 1 course where we will move from this part of it to actual, for example, addition, where we go from seeing things to add to actually working with the numbers themselves. Now the thing that Ray's arithmetic is famous for is story problems. And you'll see right from the beginning of the addition lessons the story problems start right away. And that's one of the keys to helping kids avoid math anxiety is right from the beginning they see that math is not a scary subject. It's very uh, down-to-earth and everyday things that are involved. So here you see these word problems after the initial table of ones being added together to, to the other numbers. The first, very first problem is Francis had two cents and his mother gave him one cent more. How many had he then? Well that's a very simple problem that any child can understand. You know, they can picture a Francis, you know, having two cents and his mother giving him one cent more. How many does he have then? That's something he can relate to. He can see it. And he's doing a math problem without even realizing it. You know, the next one, John had one raisin and his sister gave him three raisins more. How many had he then? Well, there again, another situation a child can relate to. Here's John. He's got a raisin. His sister gives him three more. How many does he have? So there are th situations that the child can picture in their mind and relate to. And the math just kind of naturally happens as you work through these um, story problems. So the rest of the course will follow the uh, lead of the um, trial course, but it'll start here with this initial uh, lesson here on just objects in real life that they can work with. So I do hope that you will give the trial course a try and hope your child enjoys it and I look forward to helping your child get really good at math and be being a success at it. If you want to begin your course you want to go to this URL here which you can type into your browser. You want to type BIT dot ly slash my free lessons just like there you do need the capitals as it's shown because it is case sensitive but type that exactly the way it's shown 
into your browser and that'll take you to the page where you can start working on your 40 lessons. So uh, again, thank you so much for making time to check out my free trial introductory course and I hope to look forward to teaching your child math.